Hey guys, welcome back to the Schulte Family Homestead. I'm Tony. Uh, we have a lot of work to get done in the garden today. It's supposed to rain for the next two days again. So what I want to do is we need to get these tomatoes tied up again. Uh, I have a ton of weeds that need to get pulled growing around all of the bases of the plant since we used the weed fabric. I actually cut holes around it where we planted. So we have weeds that need to get pulled there. Uh, I want to get this lettuce cut down before it bolts. So we're going to get that cut washed up so we can have a salad for dinner. Uh, this was actually the free seed packet that we got from Baker Creek and it is done it's really good I can't remember off the top of my head what it is but I will try to figure it out before the end of this video and let you guys know uh, we need to get the lawn mowed and I bag the grass every time so that we can put it in the compost pile but after we get this lettuce cut down, I am actually going to put all of the, well, not all of the clippings, but I am going to mulch over the top of the bed so that when we go to replant for a fall harvest, that there's no weeds in there. So, but we have quite a bit of toys to pick up because the kids were out playing a couple of days ago and well we just haven't had time to get out here and get it all picked up there's toys everywhere the whole garden has weeds growing in it Zucchini is taking over this little corner here. Our carrots back there. We cut down the broccoli because it had bolted already. So we got a decent little harvest. About just enough to eat fresh a couple of days. We got all of our green beans are doing fairly well. Uh, there's still some more that are popping up every just randomly uh, When I counted yesterday, we have 42 green bean plants Which hopefully will be enough that we can have a couple of meals and get some in the freezer but You never really know uh, But I am going to get started picking up some of these toys so that we can be ready to mow as soon as I get this lettuce cut down. Some of this lettuce looking kind of sad, so I'm just going to pull these out and these can go in the compost bin but some of this like right here looks pretty good still so we're going to just come in cut it off and I'm putting it right in my salad spinner bowl we will take it in and wash it spin it out and it will be a delicious addition to our dinner tonight there's a few leaves that aren't looking too good but it is kinda late for me to be cutting all this down I should have probably come out here at least a week ago and cut it down again because we have had a couple of salads out of it and it is 
some really good lettuce. But. And I think while I'm over here, I have my basil in pots back behind the lettuce. I think I'm going to cut a, cut those down. I'm not really the greatest on cutting basil, but we'll see what I can get done. If you guys see anything that I could be doing better, please leave me a comment and let me know what I could be doing better. So with the basil here, I don't know how well you can see, but there's this node right here where the two are coming out. We're gonna clip off just above it. So we get all of this, and that is supposed to promote the growth to become more bushy, which it's already starting to do, but this helps promote that. Uh, this one's really not looking that good. I don't know if I have bugs in it, which it, I have to because it's just getting eaten by something but I don't see any I don't see any egg sacs or anything else so it might be a good idea just to get rid of that one but I'm gonna come in here and do the same thing on this one I actually have two planted in each one of these this one I'm gonna take off right above that second node and I got some weeds growing in here get those out of there take the bad leaves cut those off just because why keep bad things in there and then we got two over here as well I'm going to clip off and I'm cutting these right about a quarter inch above where the node is so that should help get a better harvest out of them and it also helps keep the keep it from bolting when you don't want it to just because the you keep cutting off where it would actually bolt out of and bolting is the term we use saying that it's going to go to seed uh, a lot of plants either like the lettuce is heat dependent on bolting so if it gets too hot it'll bolt just like broccoli cauliflower any of the brassica family will bolt and you won't be able it turns bitter most of the time and you wouldn't want to eat it after it bolts so we just keep cutting it and once it bolts we get it out of there because we don't really want the seeds to reseed for next year because we might not plant in that same area next year now that we got the lettuce cut down and all the toys picked up i am going to get to mowing uh, it really only takes me about 10 minutes to mow my backyard and about five minutes to mow my front yard but because we all know what mowing the lawn looks like, I will save you that monotony and not record that. Uh, like I said, I do bag all the grass just because we can use it in the compost pile. Uh, our city actually has a municipal compost that we have a bin that comes. They come on trash day and they'll pick it up just like your normal garbage. But it goes to the compost facility. Uh, and that is where I got all of my compost for this year for the garden because it's only four dollars a truckload you can go in they'll load it up for four dollars or you can go and pick it up yourself and as long as you load it yourself it's free uh, you think a full truckload is a pretty large amount of compost for a small city garden I still have a little bit left I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with but we do still have our own compost pile that we use so I add all the clippings from my backyard to that and the front yard I put in the uh, city bin 
so that they can come pick that up. Uh, we pay $2 a month for that bin, and that's just because of the pickup cost. Uh, but I throw a lot of the stuff that looks like it may be diseased or have spots on it from the garden will go in there because they're actually getting temperatures around 220 degrees in their compost piles. So that will kill almost everything they have in there. Uh, once we get done mowing the lawn, hopefully Casey will be back with more string for me to tie up these tomatoes and I can show you how we do that. Now, because it is time for me to turn the compost pile that we actually use on a regular basis that we add stuff to, I am actually going to make a three foot round cage to keep piling it into out of two by four welded wire fencing. I have a bunch of it laying around extra from fencing off the garden. It's three feet high. Uh, I am going to cut it about seven and a half feet long. That should give us right about a three foot circle. Uh, the ideal size for a small compost pile like what we will be able to produce is actually three feet by three feet by three feet. That gives you a good temperature in the middle as long as you can keep it wet, which this year, with the amount of rain that we've had, won't hasn't been a problem at all. Uh, so I am going to get to cutting that and put it together. I'm actually going to use rabbit cage clips that I use to build the rabbit cage. Uh, I got those from rabbitnipples.com. They have all the cage building accessories along with uh, watering accessories for rabbits, chicken, and a few other things. Go check them out. The prices are actually really great. Uh, I got the tool to use these clips too. I opted for the upgraded one because arthritic hands and the other ones really didn't do too well. So I will show you what I'm going to do. Now, the way this works, you take these little pliers here and you stick one of the clips in and when you squeeze it, it actually rolls it around. I don't know how well you can see that, but it rolls the clip around to hold everything together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take and put one of these at each one of the little posts or openings on the fence and that will hold everything together. So now that I got this over here, I have a green pile over here and back beside me over here I got a bunch of rabbit manure from last year. I'm just going to combine the two piles in layers and that's going to turn everything that we need. So it's Sunday now, Sunday afternoon. It's actually about to rain and I need to get these tomatoes tied up. I didn't get it done yesterday like I needed to, so we're going to get it done today. I was planning on tying them up in bunches of four or five plants, but after going through and weeding them yesterday, I think I'm actually gonna tie them up individually this time. 
just because they are just short of where I'd want them to be to tie them up in bunches. So we're gonna tie them up just individually and I will show you how I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do, because these are getting a little bit bushier out here, I am actually going to go around the plant and tie it on one side if I can get my string untangled. I'm actually using a cotton twine uh, similar to butcher's twine. I have a roll of butcher's twine and we couldn't actually get any more yesterday so we just went with a standard cotton twine to put this together. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to keep them straight from the stalk, from the main stem coming up. But I'm gonna bring them in fairly close, keep it kinda tight. And if we got a couple of little branches that are hanging down, we wanna try to get those in there so that they're not, like that one was hanging down a little bit, we can bring that up. We'll bring some of these up. This just helps keep everything off the ground. The ground is not the best place for tomato plants. Just because that raises the possibility of disease and blight, pests. And then we're just going to tie them off. This will help keep them up straighter towards the trellis here as well as off the ground and then the next go through when they're just a little bit taller probably up here I'll actually come through and I'll start here I'll come around and then I'll do go through the backside and then come back around on the next plant but I'll show you guys that too when the time comes and then like this next plant just a it's a lot smaller than this one so this one's way smaller I'm just gonna tie this one up with just one little loop around the stem leave it kind of loose so that it'll stay up towards the trellis it won't start falling over but because there's really no branches to support I'm just going one time around the main stem but I'm just gonna keep doing this for all 42 of my tomato plants and once I'm done then I will show you the difference in the rows this is looking down the back row of the tomatoes that we got you see it's kind of all out in the middle of the little walkway we got so tying them up should help with that a great deal plus it'll help keep them up off the ground and make sure that we don't have any that get broken from walking down there or just slumping over because they're starting to get too heavy Right now it is starting to rain so I got the tomatoes done just in time uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe uh, ring the bell for notifications when we post new videos and until next time we'll see ya